Hi there, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to my adventures in Peru here on ColorQuest. So happy to have you join me. I am studying here in Peru with a local dye master learning about the plants here in the high Andes that create natural color. If you've been following along with my journey, I got to share a bit of some inspirational differences that I found while I've been studying here. I got a real treat yesterday and that is I got to join my dye master Maria on a foraging trip up above the 12,000 foot line and I'm going to look at two of the plants that we forged together and see what kind of amazing colors they may bring about in the dye pot and I'm going to work in a slightly more intuitive way today in honor of the way in which I've seen Maria working with the dye plants. So join me in my studio now as we walk through the process of discovering the colors that the high Andes are willing to share with us in our dye pot. Yesterday was such a treat. Being able to join Maria in an area where she does much of her foraging above the town of Chinchero where she lives was truly incredible. I feel beyond grateful to have had a chance to walk the paths that she walks and join her in a foraging trip. We collected two plants that I will be showing you today. However, first things first. After our foraging trip, we dropped down into Chinchero and we were lucky enough to buy some very natural wool yarn. It caught the attention of the artist who's here with me and myself and we decided to buy some skeins to dye. And that's what I'm gonna use today. Now I have been working with this very fine sheep wool yarn while I've been working with Maria and it's absolutely gorgeous. I've loved it. However, we found this more roughly spun and what appears to be much more straight from the sheep wool and we bought a group of skeins, as well as some of these super sweet tassels. You will see tassels really colorfully dyed all over. I even have some here in my studio, as you saw on that back wall. Those are the tassels. We were able to buy these tassels in their natural state, so I'm going to be dyeing some of these, as well as some of the whole skeins. I mentioned to you in a previous video that while I've been working with Maria with that super fine wool, we did not scour. Now, when we bought this wool, however, it was very obvious that it was going to need to be scoured. We double checked with the woman who was selling it and she agreed. So first thing we did was get back to the studio and scour the wool. Now, this was last night, so it was too dark in the studio for me to film, and I didn't get to capture that process. However, we used the stove, we used these big pots. I didn't have any soda ash or more gentle detergent, so I actually took baking soda and put that into the dye pot. We put the wool in, and then we took it to a really high temperature and very quickly we could see just how dirty the wool was and how much it needed to be scoured. We let that sit on the pot cooking at almost a boil for about an hour and then took it off, put it into some room temperature water to sit and settle 
and then we proceeded to rinse it. And we had to rinse it several times in order to get it relatively clear in terms of the water that was coming out. It is certainly not going to be perfectly clean, but I think it's good enough for what we're gonna to do today. So in the first video, I talked about a plant called chilka. It is really prolific here, and it is used to make the most gorgeous greens. I did see this on my foraging trip, but I opted not to take any. I have some already in the studio, and I didn't want to forage for more than I needed. However, we saw another plant, also a small bush, and we harvested from there. This plant is called tayanka. Let me show it to you. So this is the Tayanka plant that we foraged from, and it's also supposed to bring green. So we'll see about that. I will treat it similar to the way I've been working with Chilka and see if we can't welcome green. Now the other plant that we foraged for is a root. The name for this that I was told is Chukchi. There are lots of ways to make yellow here in Peru, but she gave me some very light instructions on how I need to work with this. It's going to take a little bit of work, so let's get started. The very useful mortar and pestle tool here. You can see it's pink from the cochineal that we've used. I need to take this root and try to crush it. Obviously, it's not going to be like cochineal, but I will try to mash it down to some fibrous point and see if I can pull it apart into smaller chunks. Let me go. How vibrant that yellow is beautiful okay that was not easy but I'm glad I persevered there's a lot of pounding going on and basically I just broke it apart to where I could rip it into strips and expose more of the yellow portion which is obviously where the color is going to be coming from now I do want to go on record as saying that Maria was the one that actually harvested this from the ground she carried a kind of i don't know what you call it an axe or a hoe it was a beautiful hand carved piece with a metal and and the handle itself was made out of this just really well-worn wood she carried this instrument on her back all the way up to the very heights of where we walked. And then she's the one <laughs> who wielded it to break into the root system of this plant. So thank you, Maria, for doing the really hard work. And hopefully I pounded it enough and ripped it apart enough that there will be color that can come from that woody root part of the plant. So there is my dye matter. And one cool thing you can see is that it did stain my hands, which is an indicator that there is some color in there. I have this whole other root that I can work from, but since I'm not dying too terribly much, I will probably start with just this and see what kind of a dye pot I can make. If I have to pound into this again, okay, that's what I'll do. So off to the dye pot you go. Now the tayanka should be easier. I at home would normally strip off the leaves. I've noticed that she's placed, for example, the chilka in with the stems and everything. So I might just break it up a little bit more and then maybe if I have a huge piece stick like this, I'll take it out. But that's about all the prep we're gonna need to do for this before it goes into the dye pot.
Okay. Now we turn up the heat and let both of these pots really cook up. Everything that I watched Maria working with pushed all the way up to a boil. And so I'm gonna do the same with both of these. One is root, the other is leaf and stick. Those are gonna take a little bit more oomph to break down anyway. So we'll let these go for 40 minutes to an hour, just at full steam, and then look to maybe add some modifiers to play around a little bit and introduce our fiber. Oh yeah, and one of the things I've really loved about working is our stir sticks. They're actually sticks. And I've come to really love them as a way of moving my dye matter around. Our two pots, they've been boiling now for close to an hour. So it's time for us to start thinking about modifying them. In the very first video here in Peru, I talked about different substances, local minerals and salts that are used to do color shifts. And so I wanna play around with those while I'm here and see what we can do with these pots here to maybe add a little something special and then we can introduce our wool and see what vibrancy awaits. Two very important pieces of mineral that is local to, I believe, the more Amazon region of Peru is copa. And I showed this before. I have two kinds here. I have copa amoria and I have copa blanca. And each one of these are going to perform some kind of a color shift. So I'm going to show you with a little bit of dye what each one will do and then we'll pick one to put into the pot. Now during my time studying with Maria, we used a lot of copa, but predominantly copa amoria. On the very last day, we did add copa blanca to chilca and it absolutely made a different green. So they do different things. So we're gonna add a little bit to each one of these dye samples and see how really different this mineral can be when it's introduced to this particular plant. So we'll add a little bit of the Blanca first into this and mix it around. And if you can see it, it's darkening it. It's turning it more green, but it has a sort of yellow tint to it. it. Might be hard to see in the camera. So now you can see the two dyes side by side. They are definitely different colors. So let's add a tiny bit of Amarillo now to this one and see what happens there. Oh yeah, that's like instantaneous. You see that? So I'm gonna go in there and whoosh, look at that shift. Oh my gosh. So those are the two. We've got the Amarillo and we've got the Blanca. My artist friend here would like to put in the Blanca for this particular dye. We'll go do that and then we'll add in the fiber. Okay, so for the root, we're going to be adding what's known as lemon salt. That's basically citric acid. So we'll be adding that to just brighten it up a little bit. It's gonna be a little pH sensitive so we can maybe just give it a little kick to brighten those yellows in that pot. So let's go get our modifying on and then our woolen.
so this is the fun part. We just put in some lemon salt. We were told to put in just a tiny bit from Maria. Didn't really like the color, so we add a little bit more. But you know what I want to add to it is an alum stone. Now alum is a little bit acidic, like lemon salt, and it is also a natural mordant. Plus, it might just brighten things up a little bit. So let's check in one of those little piedra de alum, see what happens. All right, one thing that we have to remember, thank you, Phyllis, is that we are not starting with white fiber. The wool that we bought in Chinchero has a more natural color to it. And so that obviously is gonna impact the color that we get. So these yellows, while they could be brighter, potentially with white fiber, they may be a little bit softer. We'll just have to wait and see. We're just gonna let them stew at that high temperature. <laughs> and for maybe 45 minutes or so, we'll check on them and then we'll let them cool down in the pot and see what we get. Hello, Green. Nice to see you. Nice background sound, huh? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna throw in a couple of bleached pieces just to do a little comparison and see how that looks and then a wood bead because you know why not guess what friends i'm going to use a little intuition here i want a little bit more yellow it's certainly possible that i wasn't able to get that root quite down to a level that would provide a little bit more color maybe i don't have enough but just, I'm not digging the yellow that much. So, on our fortune trip, we passed some Flor Coli bushes. There were only a few flowers on them. That is a flower that is collected more in the fall months here. I believe like January to April. And so, there's not a lot of it around, but I do have a small handful. I'm gonna plop those in to the dye pot, see if they can't bring us a little bit more yellow. Are you ready for the results? The green and yellow that we forged for in the mountains above Chinchero. They're pretty remarkable. Check it out. So here is the wool. You can see the little pom-pom guy. And also the other fiber that I put in, this is some weird nylon thing, nylon silk, kind of a weird thing, but it has been dying and this is, I believe, hemp. There is silk, so you can see how beautiful it takes that. And it's, you know, it's obviously lighter than the wool, but that makes sense to me anyway. And then we have the yellow. Now the yellow turned out to be quite vibrant. We did add a little bit more. We added some floor coli and just to, I don't know, brighten it up, but Honestly, look at this, silk is phenomenal. So super bright. And that was with the root and some fluorocholi and a little bit of citric acid or lemon salt. So there are the colors. I'm pretty impressed. 
well worth an incredible foraging trip in these beautiful colors as a memory. How about that for some incredible color? And again, what an amazing experience to be able to go foraging with Maria. So, next week on Color Quest, we're going to actually go into the market this time. And I've seen a plant here that I have been wanting to die with for a very long time. I had no idea that it was being used here in Chinchero as a dye source for purple, and that is purple corn. So I hope to see you next week. I am excited to be continuing my color journey here in the amazing country of Peru. See you next Friday. Our more rugged wool that we purchased in I want to say chicharron. <laughs> <More. laughs> it is not pigskins.